ridiculous. Call for a personal foul. That was absolutely ridiculous. The Boston Bruins have won the Stanley Cup. Up on down. Here comes a one-two pitch. Red Sox win the World Series. I don't know. It's tough. I, Tom, Tom's up there, man. Well, I've been a fan of Boston Celtics for, uh, you know, my whole life pretty much. The first Celtics team was back when I was like seven. And the Boston Celtics became legendary. What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Justin Mindy here on YouTube and from Being Down Takes. We are back again with another video and today we are reacting to the Boston Celtics are doing it again from the Flight Mike. Shout out to Flight Mike. I'll leave his links in the description down below and also to a link to the original video in the description down below as well. He will be talking about the Boston Celtics and how great their season's been doing. That's what I'm assuming because there's really not much bad things to be said about this Boston Celtics team this year because the Celtics are one game away from clinching the first seed in the Eastern Conference. By the time this video comes out here, they probably already clinched it. Because right now, the Milwaukee Bucks have to win out the rest of the season, and the Celtics have to lose out the rest of the season in order for them to be the second seed. That's not going to happen. At the very worst right now, the Celtics are going to be the number two seed in the Eastern Conference, and that is like a .0000001% chance of happening. So the Celtics are going to have home court advantage throughout the Eastern Conference portion of the playoffs. I don't know how many games they're out in terms of the best record in the NBA, but I want to say it's like it's a 7, 7.5, 8 game lead ahead of the first seed in the Western Conference. So there's that. And I think the Celtics are going to have home court advantage throughout the entire playoffs. So... It's going to be exciting. It's going to be an exciting run. My next Celtics game will be a playoff game. And I can't wait. I can't wait for the playoffs to begin. Because Banner 18 is coming this year. We're going to react to this video here. Leave a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed these videos. Subscribe now if you guys knew you guys know what to do. Go check out the website. The link's in the description down below. And without further ado, let's hop straight into this video. Boston Celtics are the best team in the NBA. Like how sold are you on the Boston Celtics? The Celtics are going to win the championship. If they can fix those problems, they will be champion. I win a championship, 28-year-old Jalen got. I'm going to go ahead and say it's five or six. You know, we all got to be willing to do more because we haven't accomplished what we're trying to do. The Boston Celtics are historically one of the most successful franchises in all of sports. They won their first championship in the 1950s, nearly every NBA Finals in the 1960s, two more championships in the 1970s, and three more in the 1980s. But since winning their 16th championship in 1986, their 2008 championship is the only one they've captured since. And trust me, they'll consistently remind you about that. I'm a champion too, go ahead. You know, Chuck, you are almost a champion. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> and yet this version of the Boston Boston Celtics is still missing a championship. This year, Celtics have owned the league's best record for most of the season, operating as the clear championship favorites. But being the favorites also brings immense expectations, and anything less than a championship this season will be a damning indictment of the Celtics yep. and their best player. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help get us to 900k subscribers. Now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mike check one two one two. What's going on, everybody? Uh, on draft Mike? night in 2013, the Boston Celtics traded franchise legends Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett to the Brooklyn Nets, along with Jason Terry. In exchange, the Boston Celtics received five players and a haul of first-round picks. The Celtics would get Brooklyn's first-round picks in 2014, 2016, and 2018, and crucially, the right to swap first-round picks with the Nets in 2017. Those draft picks would eventually form the core of Boston resurgence to the upper echelon of the NBA's landscape. Meanwhile, the trade was an absolute unmitigated disaster for Brooklyn. They won 44 yeah. games the following year before getting smashed in the second round of the 2014 playoffs by the Miami Heat. They barely squeaked into the 2015 playoffs with a losing record before losing in the first round. Paul Pierce only played one horrible season in Brooklyn, while Kevin Garnett got traded back to Minnesota in his second season with the Nets. The Nets would go on to be one of the league's worst teams in each of the next three seasons between 
2015 and 2018. Conversely, the Boston Celtics benefited tremendously, using Brooklyn's failures for their own gain. In 2014, they used Brooklyn's pick to take James Young 17th overall. And while he turned out to be a bust, they also drafted Marcus Smart 6th overall with their own pick. In 2016, they used their third overall pick from Brooklyn to take Jalen Brown. They used their pick swap ability to land the number one overall pick in 2017 after finishing with the East's best record. And they ended up trading that pick to the Philadelphia 76ers to move down to the third overall pick to select Jason Tatum. They included Brooklyn's 2018 first round pick in the trade that landed them Kyrie Irving. And while Kyrie Irving's two year tenure in Boston wasn't exactly a successful one, Brown and Tatum rose to become the backbone of the organization thanks to one of the greatest trade heists in NBA history. In fact, the aftermath of the deal proved to be so one-sided that the league even contemplated banning trades with three or more future unprotected or lightly protected picks. Even before Jalen and Jason That's took crazy. the team's reins, they had magical seasons from Isaiah Thomas who helped get them back into the playoffs in 2015 and 2016 before advancing to the 2017 Eastern Conference Finals. Now Thomas would leave town in the Kyrie Irving trade which gave the Celtics their new best player who led them to the second seed during the 2017 to 2018 regular season. But Boston got a glimpse into their future when Kyrie Irving underwent season ending surgery before the 2018 playoffs. Tatum and Brown became the league's leading scorers and fueled the young Celtics to a surprise run to a second straight appearance in the Eastern Conference Finals. They pushed LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers to a rock fight in game seven. And although they lose the series, Jason Tatum captured the hope of the fan base with his legendary fourth quarter posterizer over LeBron James, a sign of a hopeful things to come in the that's Eastern Conference. At least that's what the Boston Celtics fan base was hoping for. Kyrie Irving returned the following season as the Celtics best player once again. But after bowing out of the second round of the 2019 playoffs, he would leave to team up with Kevin Durant in Brooklyn. The Celtics would sign Kemba Walker as Kyrie's replacement. But the 2019 to 2020 season marked the true beginning of a new era led by Tatum and Brown. The Jays each had their first season averaging over 20 points yep. per game alongside Kemba Walker. While Tatum and Walker each made the all-star team, in the NBA bubble, Boston swept Philadelphia in the first round of the playoffs before winning a grueling seven game series over the Toronto Raptors in the second round. They would lose to the Miami Heat in the team's third conference finals appearance in four years, but an unsettling trend began emerging for their opponents. Now, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown were only in their early 20s, which isn't even close to a basketball player's prime. And yet they were powering the Celtics to deep playoff runs. However, the following season ultimately served as a speed bump where Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown became all-stars together for the first time, combining to average roughly 51 points per game. But Boston struggled to win consistently with Kemba Walker missing nearly half the season while he battled injuries. Boston finished the 2020 to 2021 season 500. And when they got to the playoffs, they were overwhelmed by the Nets without Jalen Brown and an inconsistent availability from Kemba Walker. The unusually early playoff exit would lead to major changes that off season. Team president Danny Ainge, who had run the Boston Celtics since 2003, stepped down, ceding the position to Brad Stevens, who had been- Which, in my opinion, Danny Ainge stepping down was like the best thing that could have happened in the Celtics. Like, thanks to Danny Ainge for everything he's done for the Celtics, and even now for like Tatum and Brown and so on and so forth, but like, let, let's admit it though. Let's just admit it when it's plain in black and white, his time was up in Boston. It was time to get a new GM here to be able to be willing to trade away first round picks for that extra talent to get this team over the hump. And Danny Ainge wasn't willing to do that. So it was time for a new GM change. We all know that. And Brad's a wizard. Boston's head coach since they began their rebuild a decade prior. To replace Brad Stevens, Boston hired Ime Yudoka, and although the organization agreed a new voice was needed, it didn't yield the intended results right away. And in fact, it seemed like their situation had only gotten worse. Jason Tatum made the all-star team again, but Jalen Brown missed the mid-season classic because of an early injury and the Celtics' underwhelming record. The season involved some major bumps early, with Marcus Smart calling out Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. The 
fan base was clamoring for the Boston Celtics to break up Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown as well. Public criticism from Yudoka and a losing record entering the new year. 50 games in and the Boston Celtics were once again sitting at 500 with a 25 to 25 win loss record just like the year prior. But something would completely flip the script for the Boston Celtics. As when January turned into February, the Celtics would trade for Derek White and immediately Boston rallied to race up the standings to finish 51 and 31 and second in the East. In the first round of the playoffs, they exacted some revenge on the Brooklyn Nets, sweeping them in the first round before facing a crucial moment for the Tatum and Brown pairing. Boston trailed 3-2 in their second round series against the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks. With their backs against the wall on the road, Jason Tatum willed his team to victory with 46 points and a superstar performance. But you know what? People will say that he doesn't show up when it matters the most though. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Proving to the world that he could go blow for blow with the likes of Giannis and Atacumpo, even though the Greek freak was missing Chris Middleton the whole series. Milwaukee didn't have much left in the tank after that, with Boston running away with an easy Game 7 victory to clinch yet another trip to the conference finals. The Celtics were determined to finally punch through the East and get to the NBA Finals. They played in another physical seven-game series against the top-seeded Miami Heat. The series lead changed hands multiple times. Tatum and Brown each had big performances combining to average nearly 50 points per game, culminating in a wire-to-wire -wire Game 7 victory in Miami. Tatum won his first ever Eastern Conference Finals MVP, and this iteration of the Boston Celtics would have their first shot at a championship, but in the NBA Finals against the Golden State Warriors, things would go badly for Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics. Boston jumped out to a 2-1 series lead thanks to big offensive performances in Games 1 and 3, but the Celtics withered away the rest of the series as the Warriors went in to win the series in six games. Boston failed to reach 100 points in each of their four losses. Tatum picked the worst time to have his worst series, averaging just 21 points per game while shooting an abysmal 36% from the field. Tatum had his chance, but his performance showed he wasn't the superstar that could lead his team to a championship, at least not yet. While the 2022-23 season began with the surprise suspension of Ime Udoka for violating team policies, the season largely played out similarly to the season prior. Mine is the slow start. The Celtics held a strong record for, ne for nearly the entire season, powered by All-Star seasons from Tatum and Brown once again. Jason Tatum even won the All-Star Game MVP with a game record 55 points. Mm -hmm. Boston had acquired Malcolm Brogdon before the season, and he flourished as the team's third guard, eventually winning sixth man of the year. The team was humming so well that they named interim head coach Joe Mazzulla as the permanent head coach, officially moving on from Ime Udoka. Tatum averaged 30 points per game and had more total points than any other player during the regular season. Tatum finished fourth in MVP voting and was named to the All-NBA First Team for the second year in a row. Should Meanwhile, Jalen Brown okay. ended up on the All-NBA Second Team, which would set up a pivotal contract negotiation that summer. However, in the interim, Boston looked to return to the NBA Finals. They took down the Atlanta Hawks in the first round before going the distance in a seven-game series against Philadelphia. Tatum had another superstar moment in Game 7, with a 51-point performance which but was good enough to be the third most in Celtics playoff history, while simultaneously Casual leading fans. Boston to a blowout victory to clinch the series. But facing the Miami Heat once again in the conference finals, the Boston Celtics season took a turn for the worst. The Celtics fell behind 0-3 in the series, and although they came all the way back to force a game 7, they faltered when they returned home. Brown had a whopping 8 turnovers. Tatum scored just 14 points, looking nothing like the game 7 Tatum from the Mike, previous. You're missing the, you're missing the biggest part about this game, though, with Tatum, is that he rolled his ankle in the first 24 seconds of the game. So unfortunate. If he didn't roll his ankle, man, we had a Tatum master class coming. This round, and the Celtics scored just 84 points in a devastating loss which cost them the series. It was the team's fifth trip to the Eastern Conference Finals in seven seasons. Dude, and yet, awesome. once again, the Celtics were good, just not good enough. The Celtics' 2023 offseason featured three major moves that would set the stage for the season to come. First in June, they acquired Kristaps Porzingis in a three-team trade that cost them Marcus Smart before signing him to an extension. In July, they signed Jalen Brown 
the richest contract in NBA history, a five-year Supermax extension worth $304 million, a deal he was eligible to receive because of his All-NBA selection. Finally, in early October, with Drew Holiday in Portland as a remnant of the Damian Lillard trade, Boston swooped in to acquire him in exchange for Malcolm Brogdon, the talented but injury-prone Robert Williams, and two first-round picks. With their new starting lineup now firmly in place, expectations were sky-high for a team that was no longer a young group yearning for an unexpected deep playoff run. These Celtics entered the season as the championship favorites with the highest over-under line in the league, but even with the expectations attached to them, these Celtics still haven't won anything, as Jason Tatum reiterated on Media Day. We should all feel like we gotta do a little bit more, because we didn't win. So whatever we've done has been great, but it hasn't been enough. So for myself on down the line, everybody has to sacrifice or be willing to do more, whatever it is. You know, we all gotta be willing to do more because we haven't accomplished what we're trying to do. With expectations through the roof, the, the Boston Celtics responded by playing like the best team in the league. This season, the Celtics have six streaks of five wins or more. They've only lost two consecutive games twice, and they've not lost three straight games all season. They won three games by 50 or more points this season, the most in NBA history. Their 11-game winning streak in late February and early March featured the greatest point differential during any 11-game stretch in NBA history. Even with Boston's occasional hiccups, like when Cleveland's Dean Wade single-handedly outscored them in the fourth quarter to snap that streak, the Celtics are still sitting pretty atop the East. The Celtics have such a firm grip in the standings that only a catastrophic injury or collapse would prevent them from clinching the league's top record. They became the first team to clinch a playoff berth this season. The starting lineup of White and Holiday in the backcourt with Brown, Tatum, and Porzingis in the frontcourt has been phenomenal, going 26-7 as one of the league's strongest lineups. There's not much drop-off in their winning percentage when Al Horford starts with Porzingis out. The Celtics not only have the best offensive rating in the league, they also have the second best defensive rating in the That's league. On top of all of that, Boston's net rating, which is also the best in the league by a wide margin, is tied for the third best net rating in NBA history. Wow. Almost all the teams around them on the list went on to win the NBA Finals. The team's ascension to the top of the standings can be largely attributed to Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, who were all-stars once again, but also helped smooth the transition for the team's major off-season acquisitions. Both of the Jays had their scoring and rebounding numbers decrease from last season, but their shooting numbers and assists have been slight increases. Yeah. Their buy-in has this team- That's all that matters at the end of the day is like, yeah, averaging 30 is great and all that, but like, how are you shooting the ball? Hmm? Are you, shoot are you shooting 35% from three or are you shooting 38% from three? I know you're saying, what, what do you mean? That's- 3%? It's not that big of a difference. Well, when it comes to shooting, yes, it is a big difference. It is a big difference. Tatum has been shooting the three-pointer well this season. I think he's at, what, 38% around there, if I'm not mistaken. And Jalen Brown's at, like, 35, 36% from three versus, what, 33, 32 last year? Numbers are up humming in a way that is rare even by historical NBA standards. And yet when fans look back on this team and this era of Celtics basketball, they'll ultimately judge them based on what happens in the playoffs, and rightfully so. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have only appeared in one finals, with Tatum in particular struggling on the biggest stage. He likely won't win MVP this season, although he'll receive some votes, and his reputation doesn't seem like it will change much if Boston fails to win a championship this season. And if the Celtics don't win it at all this season, it'll be difficult for them to do anything substantial to improve the team in the short term. Committing to Jalen Brown with his Supermax extension essentially put Boston on the clock, financially speaking. The new collective bargaining agreement imposed a new financial benchmark called the Second Apron. Essentially, any team that spends enough money to enter the Second Apron, which is $182.5 million or more, is severely restricted when it comes to roster building mechanisms. Some examples of penalties include no sign in trades if it keeps the team above the apron, no cash can be used in a trade, limits on trade exceptions, and if the team remains in the second apron three times in a five-year span, their first round pick is automatically moved to the end of the first round. Boston is already in the second apron, and that's before Jason Tatum's expected Supermax extension, as well as Drew Holiday's expected free agency, and Derek White, who's extension eligible this offseason. Boston has an excellent starting five, but building around them will be incredibly difficult, especially once they carry two Supermax players. Plus, Al Horford, whose impact on the team goes far 
far beyond his numbers, will turn 38 during the 2024 NBA Finals. The Celtics are going all in on this version of the team that may not have a better chance to win a championship than this year. The expectations are clear, just as Tatum acknowledged before the season. Is it pressure? Yeah. I mean, we got a really good team. We got really good players. People expect us to get to the championship and win, and we don't. You know, we didn't necessarily meet expectations. It's a handful of teams each year that realistically can probably win the championship, and we're in that mix. You know, we that's what we're aiming for, and uh, and that's what we should be aiming for. This Celtics team is no longer the same group that was just happy to be competitive in the Eastern Conference Finals. There may be no team with more championship pressure this season than the Boston Celtics. Is this the team that belongs next to some of the best teams in recent memory, or did they just get lucky yeah. through a historic trade over a decade ago? Is Jason Tatum truly an MVP level player, or is he someone who will ultimately disappoint on the biggest stage? Those questions won't be answered for a while, but in the meantime, we might be witnessing one of the most pressure-filled seasons of excellence in NBA history. Yep. Let me know in the comment section down below. Are you expecting the Boston Celtics to do it yet again? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload. I am expecting the Celtics to be in the NBA Finals this year and to win it all. And I'm expected to be in a I'm expected to be at a parade in June. That's what I think they're gonna be doing. That's going to do it for this video here. Leave a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe now if you guys knew you guys know what to do. Go check our website. The link is in the description down below. Are you excited for the playoffs? We know that answer. Of course you are. Of course you're excited for the playoffs. Who's not excited for the Celtics playoffs? I know I am for sure. And I know I will be sucking in every single moment that I can at TD Garden in the postseason. But take care of business. Don't lose games that you shouldn't necessarily lose don't play down in competition that's it simple thank you guys for watching this video it's been your boy jesse and i'll see you guys in the next video later guys